Let's talk about Doctor Who Best of the Worst. Normally we'd be talking about the top three cards from the set that are seeing play in 1% or less of decks since the set's release, but the community as a whole has been absolutely sleeping on this set, so I have 10 cards to talk about today that are seeing play in 1% or less of decks since the set's release. Coming in at number 10, we have Ryan Sinclair. For two and a red, we get a 2-2 legendary creature human. Whenever Ryan attacks, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. You may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost if it's a spell with mana value less than or equal to Ryan's power. Put the exiled cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. Doctor's Companion. You can't exactly slam Ryan Sinclair in any red deck, but as soon as you care about boosting up your creature's power in any meaningful way, Ryan becomes a very valuable attacker. He's going to get you free cards off of the top of your library. You don't have to play them from your hand. So it's a powerful card advantage and mana advantage engine. So where I think this is going to be the best is Human Tribal or in like an equipment deck. Both of those style of decks are going to be pumping their creatures power up on the regular. So if you're in one of those decks, maybe reconsider Ryan Sinclair. Number nine is Reston Monoptra Leader. For green, green, white X, we get a 0 0 legendary creature alien insect scout with flying. Reston enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. When Reston enters the battlefield, create X 1 1 green and white alien insect creature tokens with flying. Whenever you attack with one or more insects, put a plus one plus one counter on each of them. Reston's obviously great in an insect deck because it cares about insects, but where I think it's being underutilized is in a token deck in general. If you're running Hornet Queen in your deck, for example, then you may want to consider Vreston as a replacement or to run alongside it because it's at least as good as that card. So it's the same rate. If you pay seven mana, you're going to get four 1-1 one, one flyers plus this. This one's going to be a 4-4 four, four instead of the 2-2 two, two that Hornet Queen is, and it can end up pumping these 1-1s one, on its own. The downside, obviously, is you don't have the Death Touch on your little 1-1s one and you don't have Death Touch on Vreston. However, I don't think that's a huge deal for the token decks and the fact that this can scale even bigger late game, I think, makes it maybe even better. Number eight is the Flux. For two and two red, we get a Saga. Chapter one is the Flux deals four damage to target creature and opponent controls. Chapters two through five are exiled the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Chapter six adds six red mana. We do already have similar cards for four mana that will exile a card off the top of your library each turn, and they aren't limited to four draws. However, in my experience, those cards don't typically last longer than four turns anyway. Either they get swept up by some sweeper or you have ended the game by then. So I think the Flux is a perfectly good upgrade to any of those style of cards because it's going to remove something on ETB. And if you ever do get to the sixth chapter, I think you're perfectly happy just getting an extra six free mana. Number seven is Psychic Paper. For two mana, we get an artifact equipment. As Psychic Paper becomes attached to a creature, choose a creature card name and a creature type. Equipped creature has ward one, it can't be blocked, and its name and creature type are the last chosen name and creature type. Equip two. Psychic Paper is a weird one to read, but what it boils down to is a two mana equipment that costs two mana to equip that will give your creatures unblockable without any other caveats. The closest thing we have to it, and there's a few cards that do similar things, is Trailblazer's Boots. That's two mana equipment, two mana to equip, and it gives non-basic land walk. So it's kind of similar there. That's almost always going to be unblockable, but having another one of those is pretty nice. So if you've got a commander that absolutely needs to get in for combat damage and doesn't already have evasion, then consider Psychic Paper. Number six is Dalek Drone. For three and two black, we get a three three artifact creature Dalek with flying and menace. Exterminate. When Dalek Drone enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls. That player loses three life. We've got a few of these five mana creatures that enter the battlefield and destroy another target creature now. This one's probably not better than Necron Deathmark, but it's another one in that slot if you really want multiples. Number five is Ominous Cemetery. It's a land with tap to add colorless or five tap and exile Ominous Cemetery. Target creature's owner shuffles it into their library. 
Paying five mana and going down a land isn't where you want to be to remove a creature, but the opportunity cost on this is really low since it's a land. So it's always nice to have as a backup in your deck, and I think it's an easy include in any deck that's at least two or less colors. It gets a little sketchy on three color decks. Number four is everything comes to dust. For seven, white, 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 we get a sorcery with Convoke. Exile all creatures except those that share a creature type with a creature that convoked this spell all artifacts, and all enchantments. White has a lot of board wipes, but if you're in a creature typal deck that's not specifically human typal because they're the most common creature type, then I think Everything Comes to Dust becomes one of, if not the best board wipe you can include in your deck. Being able to keep all of your creatures of your typal that you care about on the field while absolutely decimating your opponent's board states and also cleaning up the artifacts and enchantments with an exile effect, this is excellent. Number three is reverse the polarity. For one and two blue, we get an instant with choose one, counter all other spells, switch each creature's power and toughness until end of turn. Creatures can't be blocked this turn. Reverse the polarity is a really interesting spell. You probably don't love paying three mana to counter a spell or really do any of these things, but having the option to do any of the three gives this spell a lot more flexibility and means it's never really going to be dead in your hand. So you probably don't play this in any blue deck, but if you really care about your creatures being unblockable and specifically your whole team being unblockable, then I think this is a card that becomes a lot more exciting. Number two is Ensnared by the Mara. For two and two red, we have a sorcery. Each opponent faces a villainous choice. They exile cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. Then you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Or that player exiles the top four cards of their library and Ensnared by the Mara deals damage equal to the total mana value of those exiled cards to that player. Ensnared by the Mara is pretty interesting. It's kind of like a sorcery spell that mimics Itali Primal Conqueror. However, it gives your opponents a choice and most of the time they probably want to choose not to give you free spells so where i think ensnared by the mara is being underutilized is in pressure decks so if you're in a deck that really puts pressure on your opponent's life total like a mogus deck something like that then ensnared by the mara becomes a lot more valuable because even if they decide to take the damage that's a great upside for you and if they decide not to take the damage then you're getting free spells so I think Ensnared by the Mara, while not applicable in every deck, is an excellent pressure piece. Best of the worst is four Nox. For two and a white, we get an enchantment with Vanishing Four. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, draw a card. Four Nox is white Phyrexian Arena that can only draw you three cards unless you can proliferate the Vanishing counters, but it doesn't deal damage to you. So when you say it out loud, it sounds kind of bad, but in a mono white deck or in a Boros deck, it becomes a lot more exciting. We have gotten more mono white card draw over the last few years, and we've gotten more of the exile style card draw for red, but if you just want straight up card draw, then Four Nox is one of the better ones we've gotten in a while for mono white decks or for Boros decks. That's it for Doctor Who Best of the Worst. This one was a pretty fun one to do. I did have to shave off a bunch of cards off of this list in order to get it down to 10. For whatever reason, people are not picking up cards from, from this set for their decks. So I would encourage you, if you found anything interesting from this list, then I think you should go through the rest of the cards and just check out the Doctor Who set. See if there's anything that might be applicable to your decks.